Welcome to Chapter Four. This is where you learn how to locate your machines. Now we're going to take this slowly and break it down for you step by step. Here's what you're going to learn on this CD: basic locating strategies. These are the basics of locating that every successful bulk candy vendor uses. These strategies are based on our 18 plus years locating machines and building routes. How to select locations? Selecting locations where your machine will sell at or above the projected minimums is imperative. Today, you're going to learn how the pros do it. How to approach business owners? How do you find the decision maker and get an agreement to place your machine at a viable location? We're going to show you how. What to say when you approach business owners? Your presentation to the location owner will determine whether you get a yes or a no. Getting to yes is not that difficult when you know what to say. How to use charity sponsorship? To get locations, you don't have to give the location owner a split of your profits. In fact, most of our vendors keep 100% of their profits on most of their locations. Charity sponsorship is the key. Common objections to locating, and how to handle them. Not every location owner is going to immediately agree to the placement of your machine in his or her business. But if you know how to handle their objections and concerns, you will locate many more machines. We've heard all the objections that exist. When you know what to say, you will locate with confidence and ease. How to select the product you will offer in your machines? You're going to learn how to select product based on price, customer taste, and regional demand. Always ask for references. We are going to cover why references are so important, and how to ask for and get them. The last resort: how to negotiate a profit split to secure a location. In some cases, the location owner will only agree to placement of the machine if he or she gets a split of the profits. We are going to share with you how seasoned vendors negotiate these splits. And finally, a word about location agreements. Do you need an agreement? Does it have to be in writing? You'll find out before we're done. This one thirteen Maple Street. Yes, that's right. I got a bunch of boxes from a multi-vend company. You got to sign right here. Oh look, honey, this must be our vending machines. Baby, we're finally in business for ourselves. Look, I got a bunch more stops to make. Where do you want me to drop these? Hmm, good question. How many boxes are there? Twenty-five. Honey, you didn't tell me you bought twenty-five machines. I thought we were just going to get ten to start. Actually, Alice, it's two machines to a box, so fifty machines. You really are in business. All right, listen. How about I just drop them over here by the garage? Now, Alice, honey, come on. It's only a few more than we talked about, and once the money starts rolling in, well, you'll see, honey. Alice, honey. All right. I know what you're thinking. You've got all your machines assembled and lined up in your living room, garage, or worse yet, on your front lawn. <laughs> just kidding. So now, maybe the thought crosses your mind: Oh my God, what did I do? This is a common first reaction. Don't worry, you're not alone. It's only natural to fear the unknown. After all, you've just made an investment in a new business that you're not terribly familiar with. There's an old saying that goes: Unknowns bring anxiety, but success cures all doubt. The quickest and most solid route to business success is to follow the plan that has made others successful and profitable. Locating is not difficult. You only think so because you haven't done it successfully before. 
What's the alternative, you say? Well, yes, you could spend the extra money to hire a professional locator to locate your machines for you. This is an alternative. And then you can go through the same process that some of our vendors have experienced. You can chase the professional locator down until he finally has time to get to you and locate your machines. In fact, one vendor who purchased 130 machines on his original order called us back to say that after eight weeks, the professional locator who agreed to locate his machines hadn't even returned his phone calls and the machines were still sitting in his garage. Now, eventually, the locator did get to him and locate his machines, eventually. And had he followed the steps you're going to learn now, he could have located all 130 of his machines in just two to three weeks, even as a beginner in the business. By the way, when that locator finally located the machines, our vendor was not happy with the locations and wound up looking for another locator to relocate his machines. And of course, time is money. Okay, are there some professional locators who will get the job done for you in a reasonable time frame? Yes, but before you go out and spend $45 to $75 per machine to get your machines located, learn how to do it yourself. You'll see that it's really not that difficult. Then you can decide whether you want to keep the money in your pocket or transfer it to somebody else's. So, if you don't have a pen and paper handy to take notes, go get that now. Or you can open your training manual to Chapter 4 so that you can reference key points as I take you through this. Basic locating strategy number one. In most cases, you want to locate your machines geographically near your home or office. This is especially true if you live in a relatively large urban area where you have more businesses, stores, and high traffic locations to choose from. Now why do we say this? Because you're going to go back to each machine on a monthly basis to cash the machine. Collect your money, add candy, spray your machine down to clean it, and head home with your cash. So you want to locate your machines in places that are going to make you money, at least $1.50 per day per machine minimum. Do you really want to drive halfway across the state each month to cash your machines? Probably not. On the other hand, if you live in a rural region, you may have to cover a larger area in order to successfully locate your machines due to business establishments being spread farther apart. This is something you will have to consider based on where you live and work. Now I want to warn you about one thing. You may already be thinking about that one laundromat or record store that you've seen a lot of people go in and out of. So now you've decided you're only going to locate your machines in laundromats or record stores. There is no absolute formula for locating success based on type of business. Sure, it's likely that a pizzeria may do better than a pawn shop, but it's also true that often the businesses that you believe may do well don't, and vice versa. Remember, to a certain degree, success in business is based on testing and retesting. Locations that you thought would do well may not. Be prepared to relocate machines based on what you're grossing at a particular location. Sometimes you will be pleasantly surprised by the location. And sometimes you will be unpleasantly surprised by the location. So when first considering which businesses to approach about locating your machines, think geographically. It's usually better to locate your machines in the immediate vicinity of your home or workplace. This makes it easier for you to get all your machines located quickly and makes it more practical for you to cash your machines. If you don't know your locale that well, get a map of your town or city and draw a circle around a region on the map in the area of your home or workplace. Jot down the street names. This will be the area where you will start to locate your machines first. Start with Main Street or the main drag in your town or city. 
This will be where you will find the greatest proliferation of business establishments and retail stores. Basic locating strategy number two. Always present yourself to the business owner as providing a free service that he or she pays nothing for. In marketing and promotions, we have an old saying, perception is reality. Now, you may be thinking that because you're selling candy, business owners are going to see you as a multi-million dollar conglomerate and want to joint venture the placement of your machine. Not exactly. First, consider this. The location owner's perception of what you do and what you want will be entirely based on how you present yourself. So the very first message you have to get across is that you provide a free service to businesses. Patrons and employees of the business will now have the convenience of grabbing a quick and tasty snack without having to leave the premise, an experience that improves the overall comfort that people experience while at that store or office. And the business owner pays you nothing for this service. You're the one doing all the work. You assemble and place the machine. You keep it stocked with name brand candy and nuts. You service the machine and keep it clean. You provide the selections that people want. You provide the increased experience of comfort that patrons and employees experience when at the business establishment. That's a lot. So your attitude has to be that you are providing the location with a service that improves the public's perception of that business and the comfort people experience while there. You're actually helping the location owner. Your service represents an improvement to their location. Remember, attitude is everything. All right, how much does the business owner have to pay you to provide this service? Nothing. It's free. All business owners should be so lucky. Now, will some location owners see it differently and want money? Yes. But your job is to make sure that these people remain in the minority. Always present yourself to the business owner as providing a free service that he or she pays nothing for. Most location owners will understand and appreciate this premise. Basic locating strategy number three. Always use charity sponsorship first. Suppose you could help people in need on a regular basis and leverage that assistance to build your route. This is what charity sponsorship is all about. Today, there are literally thousands of worthwhile causes needing our attention. From world hunger to incurable disease to child abuse, there are so many people needing the support of charitable programs just to remain alive. Charities always need money, and most of the money they raise does not come from corporate or foundation grants, but rather from people like you and me. Many of these charities recognize the intelligence of creating cash flow to the charity that is automatic each and every month. For this reason, many charities have vendor outreach programs where they receive a guaranteed minimum amount of revenue each month from participating vendors. What's in it for you, the vendor? When you participate in a vendor outreach program, the charity is said to be sponsoring your machines. With a known charity backing you, you gain credibility when proposing the placement of your machine to the location owner. You also gain something else. The perception that the location owner, by allowing your machine to be placed in his or her business, is helping the needy without having to make a cash contribution to that charity. In fact, you're making the monetary contribution to the charity so that the location owner doesn't have to. In actuality, you're helping yourself get the location by doing so. And the monthly contribution you make to the charity will be less than any split in profits you would have to pay to the business owner. 
So this is a win-win situation for all involved. In Chapter Four of your training manual, you will find a list of recommended charities nationwide that have vending outreach programs designed to raise money for their causes. Now, when you participate in this vending outreach program, you, as the vendor, make monthly tax-deductible contributions to the charity. Yes, I said tax. Deductible. You see, in most cases, you're going to get this money back anyway. The contribution you make is in the form of a fixed, guaranteed monthly royalty payment, averaging one to three dollars per month per machine. Align with the charity, and let the business owner know that you are participating in a vending outreach program that supports a charitable cause. This is the best means of securing a location, without having to offer the business owner a split of your profits. I'm going to cover this in more detail in a few minutes. Remember, offering the owner of the business establishment a split on your profits is a last resort. Always use charity sponsorship first. Basic locating strategy number four. Always take a machine with you when approaching a business to locate your machine. Do you know what makes the U.S. economy run? Credit cards. That's right, credit cards. With the advent of the credit card, we learned all about impulse buying. That is to say, we now know that with respect to goods and services, people make decisions based on impulse. This goes double for your locating presentation. The decision whether or not to allow you to place one of your vending machines in a store or office, where it is going to make you money, will be made based on impulse. The business owner or authorized decision maker is going to look at you, quickly get an impression of you, and then look at your product and service. The decision will be impulsive, quick, and final. So, how can you expect the business owner to make a favorable decision about accepting your machine in his or her store or office when you don't have the machine and candy with you? It's not possible. What is the location owner's impression of you going to be as a professional vendor if you just leave a business card or flyer? Now, there is another equally important reason to carry the machine with you when doing your location presentation. Let me give you an example. Do you know about water filters and air filters? A lot of people have them. Now, the water and air filtration industry grew by leaps and bounds because their vendors employed one simple approach: the puppy dog approach. They asked prospects to try their water and air filters for two weeks, free of charge, and then install the units free of charge for the trial. As you can imagine. They didn't get very many returns, and business was brisk. How many people are going to get under their sink or call into their plumbing system to remove a used water filter, box it up, and send it back to the manufacturer? Not many, unless they're really dissatisfied with it. In candy vending, we do the same thing. It's much harder for a business owner to say no to locating your machine when you walk into the business. With the machine, with charity sponsorship, offering the service free with a taste test of candy. How do you actually do it, and what do you say? We're going to cover that later in this chapter. Remember, always take a machine with you when approaching a business to locate your machine. Basic locating strategy number five. When locating your machines. We suggest you get your feet wet approaching people you don't know first. Okay, you've got all these machines and you're all excited. You're excited because you've made a list of all these people who are your personal friends and associates who either own businesses or work in management in a viable business establishment. So you figure you're going to call in a few favors and get your machines located in a jiff. Question. How are you going to feel when your best friend, who runs a thriving chiropractic office with tons of patients sitting around each and every day, 
How are you going to feel when she tells you she doesn't want your machine in her office because candy is bad for your health? Are you going to argue with your best friend? Are you going to give her a piece of your mind to end the friendship? Find another chiropractor? Organize a boycott of her clinic? Are you capable of handling this type of rejection when you're just starting out? Who knows? Sometimes in business, better decisions are made when there is no emotional entanglement. And rejection is part of what you have to learn to handle to be successful in any entrepreneurial venture. At times, it is easier to handle rejection when no comes from someone you don't know and don't have any emotional ties to. Although we do recommend that you approach business owners and associates who you know, we suggest you start with people you don't know first. The advantage to doing it this way is that in dealing with business owners you don't know first, you will have ample opportunity to hear every objection under the sun. You'll experience rejection and learn to handle it, and you will gain confidence and be able to polish your locating presentation. With this polish and practice, you will be more adept at handling situations where, for example, you approach a business that you have patronized for years, and the owner happens to be a family friend, and he tells you, no. Remember, we recommend that when locating your machines, get your feet wet approaching people you don't know first. How do you select your locations? Remember basic locating strategy number one? Locate your machines geographically near your home or office. So here's a checklist for selecting locations. Your best locations are any businesses that have retail traffic or offices where people are working. Start with the main street in your town. When deciding on locations to approach, remember that you want to build a vending route that will be relatively easy to maintain geographically. You probably don't want to have to drive across the state to cash your machines. However, you will also have to consider the density of your locale with respect to stores and offices. Our vendors find that it helps to get a map and draw a circle that represents an area near your home or office. This is where you will start. Remember that locating takes a little practice. As you start to do it, you will get better at it. In the beginning, it will probably take you 10 to 20 minutes to do each locating presentation. To start, you'll be successful at placing one machine per hour. As you get better at it, you will place two to three machines per hour. You can actually locate eight to 24 machines in an eight hour day. It's really not difficult. If you don't carry the machine in with you when you present yourself to the business owner, your hit rate on locating machines will drop by as much as 75%. It's too easy to say no to a business card or flyer. With machine and candy in tow, you are utilizing the all-too-important puppy-dog approach. Now you may be thinking, wow, this is going to be more of a hassle than I thought. Maybe I should call the locating service. Well, you can, but consider this. Professional locators charge $45 to $75 per machine to place one machine. Why pay this when you can locate one to three machines per hour yourself? How to use charity sponsorship to get locations. As we discussed earlier, charity sponsorship is used primarily to get your machines located without having to give the business owner a split of your profits. Funds raised ensure that people in dire need of help get the support necessary to positively impact their lives through the programs the charity offers. This is a win-win situation. Again, when you participate in a vending outreach program, you as the vendor make a monthly tax-deductible contribution to the charity. This contribution is in the form of a fixed, guaranteed monthly royalty payment averaging $1 to $3 per month per machine. 
Aligning yourself with a charity and letting the business owner know that you participate in a vending outreach program that supports a charitable cause is the best means of securing a location without having to offer the business owner a split of your profits. So your first step is to contact not-for-profits that have vending outreach programs in place. You can also contact local charities and not-for-profits that you make personal contributions to. In Chapter 4 of your training manual, you will find a list of national charitable organizations that have vending outreach programs. When you contact them, identify yourself as a bulk candy vendor and ask them to send you all materials and agreements pertaining to vending outreach. The agreement between you and the charity will be a guaranteed fixed royalty agreement that will stipulate a monthly contribution to the charity of $1 to $3 per machine. You will pay the charity directly out of your profits. The charity does not enter into an agreement with the owner of the business where you have placed your machines, nor will the charity have any contact with that business. The agreement is between you and the charity. All right, so how does this help you? Right now, you've agreed to pay a guarantee to the charity, and you don't have your machines located yet. Well, that's just it. Once you have secured your agreement with the not-for-profit sponsor, you will be in a position to represent yourself to the business owner as a fundraiser for the charity. And what could be better than asking someone to make a charitable contribution to a worthwhile cause without asking him or her to give you any money? Being able to represent yourself as a member of the community seeking to help raise money for a charitable cause is what encourages the business owner to say yes. And the business gets a free service that enhances the perception of comfort associated with his or her business. This is your shield against having to negotiate profit splits with the business owner. And it works a lot of the time. In the next section of this chapter, you will learn exactly what to say when approaching the business owner to locate your machines with charity sponsorship. Now suppose you want to approach a larger business or corporation about placing your machines at their offices. How do you get the decision maker using charity sponsorship? Most charities that have vending outreach programs also have direct mail brochures that they use in conjunction with vendor marketing. This mail piece can be used to make your introduction to the decision maker before you go in with your machine. Here's how it works. Contact the company by phone and ask to speak with the office manager or the person in charge of ordering supplies. Get that person's name and title before he or she comes on the line. Then introduce yourself and ask the decision maker to accept the brochure in the mail in advance of seeing you in person. Or, now that you have the name and title of the decision maker, simply mail the brochure with a note that you will be stopping by. The next step is to go into the company and ask to speak with the person you mail the piece to. Make sure you take a machine and candy with you. So let's review charity sponsorship. Here's your checklist. Contact our list of national charities and your own and request agreement and materials for vending outreach programs. Negotiate your guaranteed fixed monthly royalty with the charity. Now you want to make sure that the charity sends you their stickers for your machines. These are labels that go on the top of your Venstar 3000, indicating to the public that a portion of the proceeds of their purchase goes to a charitable cause. This is an incentive for people to put quarters in your machines and also gives you credibility with the owner of the business. Next, go to the business you are approaching about locating. Make sure you have a machine with you with the charity label prominently displayed on the top of the machine. For larger businesses or corporate offices, use the direct mail piece 
provided by the charity to make your introduction to the decision maker. How to approach location owners. Okay, we know what you're thinking. How am I going to get all these machines in my car? How far are you going to go anyway? In many cases, you will place most of your machines near where you work or live. What are your options? Well, you can take a few machines at a time and make more frequent runs back to your house. Or you can stack the machines in the trunk and back seat of your vehicle. Or you can borrow a van or rent a van for a day or two. You can locate up to 25 machines in one eight hour day. Most vans will hold twice that amount. So, how do you stack machines in your car? This is not as hard as it seems. You may be thinking that you've got to fit a fully assembled machine into your car, but that's not necessary. Because no tools are required to assemble the stand and pedestal of the Venstar 3000, it's very easy to assemble the machine and install the head onto the stand just before you walk into the location to do your presentation. The head of the machine is 18 inches long by 14 inches wide by six and a half inches deep. You will put a minimum of three pounds of candy per selection into each head before loading them into your car. Here's what we suggest. Even in a compact car, you can put three machines in the back seat. You can then place a layer of cardboard and foam or bath towels between the machines or on top of them so that you can stack machines without breaking anything. You can actually use the same cardboard and foam that the machines were delivered to you in. So you've got three machines in the back seat. Then put three more machines in front or on top of the first three. In other words, make layers either horizontally or vertically. Please refer to the pictures in Chapter 4 to view how machines are stacked. If necessary, the machine stands and pedestal bases can be placed in the footwell of the front and back seats. If you are locating by yourself, you can fit six to nine machines inside a compact car and another three to five machines in your trunk. That's a day's worth of locating. Again, your worst case scenario is that you have to go back home to load up more machines. If you have to do that once or twice in a day to get your machines located, it's worth it. Or maybe you'll have to rent or borrow a van for a day or two. That's a nominal cost of doing business. Carry the machine with you into the business you are approaching. Okay, so now you're going to carry the machine with you into the business. First of all, the machine is not heavy. Fully assembled, the machine weighs 20 pounds. Then you are going to put a minimum of 3 pounds of candy per selection into the machine before walking it in. So that's an additional 9 pounds for a total of 29 pounds. You're going to park your car or van near the business and carry the machine a few paces into the store or office. Not hard. And I know you can lift 29 pounds with both hands. But suppose you can't. Remember, you packed the machine heads into your car, separated from the stands and pedestals. You did this in order to fit more machines into your vehicle with the intention of installing the head onto the stand just before walking each machine in for your presentation. So if you want, you can just carry in the head of the machine, that's the top part of the machine, with the candy in it. This makes your load much lighter. Once you have shown the head of the machine with the candy in it and served up a helping of candy to the decision maker and gotten a yes, you can then go back out to your car, carry the base of the machine in, that's the stand and the pedestal, and complete the assembly. Remember, no tools are required to assemble the stand of the machine. So, always take the machine with you. 
Let's review. Assemble your machines first, and then load them into your car in layers. Use your trunk as well, and place machine stands and pedestals in the footwells of the front and back seats. Remember to fill each canister with about three pounds of candy and pack the machine heads separately. Or rent or borrow a van and fill the van with your fully assembled machines. Or place a smaller amount of fully assembled machines into your car and make more frequent trips back to your house for additional machines. Carry the machine into the business with you. For easy carrying, you can place both hands underneath each side of the head of the machine. Make sure you have a minimum of about three pounds of candy per selection in the machine. This makes a credible display to the business owner. Or you can just carry the head of the machine in with you and then go back for the stand and pedestal, which should be already assembled in your car or at the curb. Make sure that you present yourself in the proper fashion. Here's what I mean. Because this is an impulse decision, you will only have one opportunity to make a good first impression. So you want to look and sound the part. Dress professionally. We strongly recommend you wear a Venstar cap, shirt, windbreaker, or golf jacket when you enter the business. This lends credibility to your presentation. You can purchase these items by contacting our customer service department. Make sure the charity label is displayed on the top of your machine and have business cards with you at all times. So let me walk you through this from beginning to end. Listen carefully. You get out of your car and head for the front door of the location. What should you be carrying with you? A flyer? Wrong! A machine, either fully assembled or just the head of the machine. And what's in the head? Three pounds of candy in each of three canisters. You will need to test the location to see how different selections move before committing to product for your machine. The location owner and employees at the location may also have requests for particular types of product. After your first month, you will know what moves. You also have candy and nuts loaded into the head because you are a candy vendor and you need to look credible. You're also giving the decision maker a taste test to entice that person to say yes. Okay, you enter the location. What's the first thing you do? Ask to see the owner? Not yet. When you make your way into the business from the door, immediately get a visual sense of areas where the machine could be placed. You can do this by quickly scanning the store or office before you ask to speak with the person in charge. This is important. You want to be prepared to show the decision maker where the machine can go when he or she says yes or when he or she poses an objection by stating, I don't know where you're going to put it. So, quickly scan the room looking for high traffic areas. Is there a coffee machine in the business that your candy vending machine can sit next to? Is there a cash register? What about a water cooler? Do you notice a door with a lot of people traffic going through it? Is there an area where people sit while waiting to be helped or seen? Does the store or office have an area where employees sit to eat? Get as much of a visual as you can before you start talking. Another important tip is to make sure that the charity label is displayed on the top of the machine. When doing your presentation to the person in charge, you are going to lean the machine forward and point to the charity label affixed to the top of your machine. More about this in a moment. The charity label, part of the material you will get from the charity when you register for their vendor outreach program, goes in the center of the top lid, not on the face of the canister 
where it is going to cover an additional three inches of display. Remember, you will already have a candy label on the top of the face of the canister so that people can see what brand they're buying. If you then put the charity label on the face of the canister, you will make it difficult for people to see the candy. In addition, if you put the charity label on the face of the canister, when you swap canisters to refill candy, guess what? You no longer have the charity label on the machine where you want it. If you put the charity label at the bottom of the canister face, when you get to three pounds of candy or less, you can't see the candy. If you put it right at the top of the canister lens, then where are you going to put the candy label? At the bottom? No. So, put the charity label on the top door of the machine. If you ever want to change the charity, you can place the new charity's label over the old one or switch to a top door without a label. All right, so your labels are all in the right places and you've entered the location and scanned the room. Now you're going to start talking. Remember, the decision to accept your machine will be made by the business owner or someone else in charge the day you arrive with your machine. Even if the owner or decision maker is not present at the time you show up, you can still place your machine. I'm going to show you how that works when we get to handling objections. So here you are, all dressed up with some place to go. You walk into the business establishment with bells and whistles on, or better yet, with your Venstar windbreaker and cap, with your machine in tow. Now you're thinking to yourself, any second now someone is going to call security and have me escorted out of the building. Instead, someone at the counter or desk asks, can I help you? Forget about how you think you may look to this person. You've just gotten your foot in the door. You have someone's attention. Let's assume for the purpose of this example that you are going with charity sponsorship. For example, the National Federation for the Blind. Here's what you say. Hi, my name is Bob Smith. I work with the National Federation for the Blind Vending Outreach Program. I'd like to place this small, handsome snack machine here in your establishment. A fixed guaranteed royalty benefits this charitable organization. I am a local community member. I service the machine. I keep it clean. I keep it filled with name brand products. Would you like one? Now is when you lean the machine forward as you say this so that the person in charge can see the charity label on the top of your machine. I keep it clean. I keep it filled with name brand products. Lean the machine forward so that the decision maker can see the charity label and point to the label. There may be an awkward pause. Now you can ask, would you like one? Be prepared with a mental list of where you can put the machine, your visual scan of the area, remember? So that when the person in charge says yes, you can respond in the following manner. When I made my way from the door, I did a visual and picked where I thought would be the best spot to put a candy vending machine. Now turn around and place the machine in that exact spot. Have the machine filled with at least three pounds of candy selection in each canister, sweet, sour, and salt. After you place the machine in the spot where you want it, you're done. If you went in with only the head, go back out to your car, get the stand, bring it back into the location, install the head onto the stand, and place the machine in the area you decided it would go. That's it. Well, not exactly. You're usually not done until you've handled some objections. Here are the common objections to locating and how to handle them. I'm going to list them first before we role-play them. I'm not the boss. Or, no, I can't make that decision and the owner's not here. I don't have the space. What do I get out of it? You might hear an objection like this. I had a machine here once and it was never serviced properly. 
It's too small. It's too big. I had vending machines here before, and they make a mess. Or someone might say to you, It won't do well here. I already have a machine in here. What happens if the machine is vandalized? These are the kinds of objections you will hear. So let's take them one at a time. We're going to role play this for you. This is the way we suggest you handle objections. Objection. I'm not the boss. Or. No, I can't make that decision, and the owner isn't here. What's your name? Frank. Hi, Frank. And what's your boss's name? If the person hesitates on answering this question and can't seem to figure out the boss's name, you may very well be talking to the boss. But let's suppose he responds. The owner's name's Peggy, but she's not here now. Let me ask you a question. Is Peggy the type of person that if you said yes to me, based on getting her final approval, and she came back and saw the machine, would she blow her top and fire you? Or could you just say to her, the person left it here and left his card with a beeper number. If you don't want it, he will come back and take it out. Would Peggy be okay with that? If the answer is yes, get the name of the person who approved it, leave your business card with that person, and place the machine in the best area of the store or office. If you are told that the owner is the type of person who will blow her top, go back when the owner is expected to be there. You can leave a Venstar business card and simply say, Here's my card. It's got a picture of the machine. If I don't hear from Peggy, I will assume it's okay for me to come back later today to discuss it. Then you return with the machine. Next objection. Can you leave something for my boss to see? I could, but that wouldn't be the best thing for your boss because I would still have to discuss it with him. So if you can't make the decision, why don't I leave the machine along with my card? If he doesn't want it, he can call me and I'll come right over and take it out. I'll tell you a quick story. Rather than carrying a machine, a vendor once tried leaving flyers for business owners to read. Upon entering one store, he found the business owner in and realized he had just run out of flyers. So because he had not brought a machine with him, he ran back to the last office he had been in where he had just left a flyer. Since the business owner of that establishment had not yet returned to see his flyer, and he had a business owner next door waiting to look at something, he asked the secretary if he could have the flyer back that he had just left with her. She responded, sure, and fetched the flyer out of the garbage pail next to her desk. The moral of the story? Don't leave flyers behind for people to read. Always bring a machine. Remember the visual scan of the area that you did when you first entered the business? You did it in preparation for this objection. I don't have the space. Well, what about right here? Put the machine in a space where you have at least two and a half inches of width to fit the stand of the machine and enough room for the head. Next objection. It's too small. If it were any larger, you'd probably tell me it's too big. The truth is the Venstar 3000 is designed to fit in most areas while being unobtrusive. But you know what really matters? Your patrons and employees will have the added comfort of being able to snack while at your business. And you're getting this service free of charge. Not to mention the fact that you will be supporting a very worthwhile cause through my charity sponsor. Next objection. It's too big. If it were any smaller, you'd probably tell me it's too small. The truth is the Venstar 3000 is designed to fit in most areas while being seen at the same time. But you know what really matters? Your patrons and employees will have the added comfort of being able to snack while at your business. And you're getting this service free of charge. Not to mention the fact that you will be supporting a very worthwhile cause through my charity sponsor. Objection. What do I get out of it? Well, you put a quarter in here, point to the coin slot. You get a handful of candy here, point to the palm of your hand, and you get a warm feeling in your chest right about here. Place your hand on your heart. And your employees get the opportunity to snack 
without having to leave the building. And you don't pay anything for the service. I do this one to two days a month. I don't have to work with a charity. I choose to. This year, I'll contribute an average of $1,200 to $1,500 to the National Federation for the Blind. I don't contribute this voluntarily. I am invoiced on a monthly basis. A note here, if you have canceled checks from previous contributions, show the business owner. 95% of this contribution goes directly to help blind people. And you may not be aware that most people who are blind are not born blind. The leading cause of blindness in the U.S. today is diabetes, a disease that more and more Americans are contracting every day. Next objection. I had a vending machine here before. They make a mess. Oh, we have a unique spill tray. Let me show you how it works. Demonstrate the spill tray by vending some candy into the tray so that the decision maker can see how the tray keeps the candy from spilling onto the floor. Objection. I really had a bad experience with a vendor. He didn't service the machine. I provide excellent service. I don't carry in bags of candy. We have a unique patented canister system. All I have to do is swap in pre-filled canisters of candy and clean the machines. I'm a local community member. I will be by regularly. Objection. It won't do well here. Well, it doesn't cost you anything. Why not let me put the machine in and let me be the judge? Next objection. I already have a machine in here. Are you saying that vendors shouldn't have any competition? Aren't there other companies here in town doing the same thing you're doing? Sure there are. But that doesn't stop you. Let me give it a shot. It's not going to cost you anything for me to try your location. Note, businesses that already have vending machines are often more agreeable because they have already said yes to vending machines. Next objection. What happens if the machine is vandalized? I have theft and vandalism coverage. The machine is covered for fire, theft, and vandalism. Should anything happen, I will handle the filing of all the necessary reports and claims. So, these are the common objections you will hear and how we suggest you handle them. How do you decide what product to put into your machines? The Venstar 3000 is designed to dispense a wide variety of candies and nuts. The most popular products available for you to vend are M&M Plain, M&M Peanut, Mike and Ike's, Skittles, Chickle Tabs Gum, Reese's Pieces, Cashews, and Pistachios. These are the products we recommend you vend. They are the products that move year-round regardless of season. One of the advantages you have in the vending business is by vending quality products that people have enjoyed and come to trust for years, you are able to capitalize on the position these products have in the marketplace, their brand awareness. The companies who manufacture these products spend millions of dollars in advertising in order to create brand awareness in the public mind. When you vend these products, you get the benefit of all that advertising without having to advertise yourself. All the products mentioned have been evaluated by us for use in the Venstar 3000. Other products may work as well in certain geographic locations. Generally, candy and nuts prepared with a pan texture, that's a smooth or hard texture or covering, these are dispensed best. The following are all the considerations when choosing products to vend. Size, shape, shell, texture, shelf life, the brand awareness of the product, and seasonal weather conditions. Let's start with size. You want any product you vend to flow smoothly into the hand of the customer. The worst thing that can happen is that a customer drops a quarter in your machine and nothing comes out. This problem is known as bridging. Product piles up into a bridge that covers the opening of the delivery chute. Bridging usually occurs when you are using a product that is not the right size. Please refer to Chapter 3 for information about Vend settings. With your Vendstar 3000, it is best to use free-flowing products 
like M&Ms and Skittles, where the size of the product is manageable. Shape. Shape of the candy or nut is a consideration for the same reason as size. Misshapen product or product that has a large shape may cause bridging, as in the previous example. To start, refer to the list of products stated earlier in this section for candy and nuts that we know are the right shape for the Venstar 3000. Shell. In general, products with a hard shell are best for bulk candy vending because they flow more freely and tend not to stick in the machine. Texture. As you can imagine, products with a smooth surface and a texture that is not jagged or rough will flow more freely. Shelf life. Shelf life is an important consideration when buying product to vend in your machines. Product with all the components we have mentioned so far, right size, manageable shape, hard shell, smooth texture, these types of products will tend to have a longer shelf life. For example, Skittles will have a much longer shelf life than chocolate raisins, largely due to the differences in shell and texture. Let's talk about brand awareness of product. You may find, based on your geographic location, that there are candy and nut products that represent popular brands in your community, even though they don't have a national brand awareness. This is where a little common sense market research may turn up more profits for you. Just be sure that you take all of the items in this section into consideration when choosing a product that is not on our recommended list. Also, keep in mind our recommended Venn settings for the Venstar 3000. Seasonal weather conditions. Weather conditions in your area may determine what products you vend at which time of year. For example, if you live in a region like southern Florida, where it is hot and muggy the majority of the time, you may not want to vend candy that has a mutable covering that could melt in the heat. This will cause the candy to stick together and, over time, decompose. In situations like this, you would have to locate the machine in a business where there is air conditioning, making sure the machine is not in the direct path of sunlight. Or you could put less candy in and service the machine more often. Or you may want to vend a different product altogether. This is just one example. Seasonal weather conditions in your area may be a consideration. Let's talk about the sweet, the sour, and the salt. When deciding what product to vend, taste is an important consideration. And because people's taste varies, we recommend that you offer a sampling of the big three, sweet, sour, and salt. These correspond to the three categories that most people's taste falls into. This is also why we created the unique patented design of the Venstar 3000, so that you can offer a selection for each of these three tastes all in one machine. Now one note here. Make sure you read and reread Chapter 3 for important information regarding vend settings for your machines and for additional information about how to select product. Always ask for references. In any business, no matter what the business, word of mouth is the best form of advertising and promotion. Even without the critical mass achieved by corporate advertising, you can still create word of mouth for locating your machines. You do it by always asking for references. Here's how. By the way, do you know of any other businesses in the area that I could speak with regarding our vending outreach programs for charities? Do you work for a store or company that has a lunchroom or a small cafeteria? Or would you happen to have business associates or other business owners who you know personally where I could just use your name to approach them about the money we're raising for charities through our vending outreach program? Are there other doctors or health practitioners in this area that you are aware of personally? These are examples of how to ask for references. Always ask for references. The last resort. How to negotiate a profit split to secure a location. In some situations, 
the business owner or person in charge is not going to be swayed by your charity sponsorship. In these cases, the business owner is going to want a split of your profits. However, offering a split on profits is a last resort, not your first offer. Before you negotiate a profit split, you have to consider the following. Is this a prime location? Is it worth giving it a try to find out? Could the location be so good that even at a greater profit split, you can still make money and perhaps place more machines in various parts of this location? Do you want to test the location anyway just to knock out your competitors? Remember, if the split is not working for you, you can always remove the machine and locate it somewhere else. Here is a checklist for negotiating splits on your profits. Always negotiate a split based on net profits, not gross. This way you control the margin that you are basing the split on because the business owner is not privy to your candy costs. Therefore, you can present those costs however you want. Be prepared to document your expenses if the owner asks. Never give away more than 20 to 25% of your net profits unless you have determined that the location is really worth it. We recommend you start by offering 10% of your net monthly profits. This gives you a negotiating range of 10 to 25% to work with. Who's counting the money? You are, of course. But be prepared for the owner's demand to be present when the money is counted. And on whose schedule is the money going to be counted? You guessed it. Probably the owner's schedule. One of the luxuries you give away when profit splitting. Or you don't have to do a profit split. You can pass on the location and go on to the next business that will accept charity sponsorship. A word about locating agreements. Some vendors think they are protecting their interests best by insisting that the location owner sign a written locating agreement. Of course, this is your decision. In doing so, it is your responsibility to apprise yourself of the laws in your state that would govern such an agreement. However, you do have another alternative. You don't have to use a written locating agreement at all. The problem with locating agreements is that they give the business owner a reason to say no. You won't be able to enforce the agreement anyway unless you're willing to spend money to take the business owner to court. And of course, this gives the business owner the option of taking you to court. So why have it? Generally speaking, when the business owner and you, the vendor, are unhappy with the relationship, it's a no-brainer. You simply remove the machine and locate it elsewhere. You have just completed the audio CD for Chapter 4. In this CD, we covered the five basic locating strategies, how to select locations, how to use charity sponsorship to get locations, how to approach business owners, what to say when you approach business owners, common objections to locating and how to handle them, how to select the product you will offer in your machines, how to ask for and get references for locating, the last resort, how to negotiate a profit split to secure a location, and a word about locating agreements. This ends the audio CD for Chapter 4.